Welcome to Cold Brew Chat. I'm excited to be joined today by one of our Team Infinite athletes. She made her Olympic debut in London in 2012. She won a gold medal in the 800 meter at the Pan Am Games in Toronto in 2015. And in her second Olympic Games in Rio in 2016, she placed fourth in the 800 meter. Please help me welcome Team Infinite athlete, Melissa Bishop to the show today. Welcome, Melissa. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I want to kind of get right into things today and talk about track and field, your sport. What, what's the story behind that? Kind of when did all that start? Um, it started when I was in elementary school. Um, it was one of those announcements over the PA systems at lunchtime. If you're interested in joining the track and field team, then come on out at lunchtime. We're going to run loops around the play yard. And that's really where it started. And I don't think... Um, I mean, I had a lot of success early, and I think that's why I kind of stayed in the sport so long. Um, and it really didn't come to fruition until, um, you know, my high school and university career. And I, I had always been a multi-sport athlete up until I was going into university. I played hockey at a fairly high level, um, plus all the high school sports too. But track and field really held my heart, and I. Went into university, I found a really great coach, Dennis Farrell, who uh, turned me into the athlete I am today, and we have been doing it ever since. That's awesome. It's cool that you were like a multi-sport athlete growing up too. So what kind of, I guess, stuck out in track and field? Like, why was that where your heart was or what you love so much about it compared to the other sports? Well, there's a couple of things. Like, I, 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 like I said, I had a lot of success or fairly early on in my career. And I didn't always have success. Like I wasn't always, always good. I mean, you go through some really hard times, but um, I loved the feeling of running. I like how hard I have to work and it's totally on me. My results are on me. I don't have to depend on a team. But on the flip side, you miss the team atmosphere um, in track and field because it is a very individual sport. And that's what I loved with my hockey and my volleyball is that I had a team to back me up. And now as a professional track and field athlete, I do have a team that I work very closely with, just not on the field. And um, I think we've tried to emulate that team feeling as much as we can in the track and field setting. And we've really found the perfect um, blend of both worlds right now. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. I always kind of wonder that with track and field athletes, because yes, you're, you're competing, you know, individually, but you still, you're part of a team, which is kind of nice that you have that atmosphere, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the Olympics. Uh, you're an Olympic athlete. So tell us kind of what that's like. Like you said, you started doing this in elementary school. Did you ever think you'd be on this international stage? I, yeah, I mean, I had dreams ever since I was a little girl of being an Olympian. I didn't know what sport it was going to be in. I just knew that I was going to be an Olympian. And as time progressed, I got uh, more into track and field and I really enjoyed the sport of running. So my goal then was I am going to be an Olympian in track and field, but I had absolutely not a clue what it would take to get there. And 2012 was, we were certainly targeting those Olympics, but they were almost like a learning year for us. I was supposed to go back and do my master's um, at the University of Windsor and I deferred it so I could train full time to try and make the Olympic team. And we did. And it was amazing. It, I mean, I experienced the opening ceremonies. I like, it was seriously a dream come true, but I didn't compete as well as I had wanted to. I didn't make it out of the first round. And so in my heart, I knew that's, that's not what I wanted my Olympics to be like. That wasn't the experience that my dreams were. Um, I had more than just making the Olympic team was on my bucket list. So then we've been training really hard to be on the podium because ultimately my goal is an Olympic medal. And in Rio, I was really close. I was fourth. And now we're, we're getting ready for Tokyo 2021. Okay. Gotcha. No, that makes yeah. complete sense. Very cool. Um, so since you brought that up, we'll just kind of go to that topic now. I know no Tokyo 2020. Um, so kind of, yeah, what's been going on for you? How have you kind of, adapted to COVID or what are your, I guess, goals uh, going forward right now? Um, during COVID, like it was hard to first initially adapt to the new lifestyle. We have a two-year-old daughter and we 
we didn't have daycare and my husband was working, um, trying to manage both of our working lifestyles while managing a two-year-old at home. And that became a really difficult part of our training because so much I depend so much on the time that I need to get my work done and I just didn't have it. So we learn really quickly how to time manage and how to share our time and how to be flexible. And I think that was the biggest thing that we learned out of all of COVID was how to be flexible with our time. And it was just a matter of fitting in workouts when we could. We had no facility access um, up until really, I mean, the weather wasn't great early on, but uh, we ended up just jumping fences to get on tracks to try and get some work in, which ended up being the, our best option up until right now because the university still isn't open. Um, I'm on a break right now, so it's okay, but um, we put a gym in our basement right before COVID hit, thankfully, so we still had access to weights. I had a treadmill down there and a, a spin bike, so I was still very much able to train. It was just mm -hmm. trying to time manage everything um, and all the moving parts in our world right now. Mm -hmm. No, it makes sense, and I mean, like you said, training in a different space, obviously adapting to the home, uh, aspect of training and things yeah, like that. It's really um, so, yeah. So what are your goals kind of now uh, going forward? I know with Tokyo being postponed, what's your kind of training direction or yeah, what's, what's your mindset so now? For us, we tried to keep things as normal as possible. We are taking a break as we would normally take a break. We're going to start our base season as we would normally start our base season. So really we're trying to keep things the same as we normally would every single year just so that we can be on that same pathway. So mm -hmm. my goals are still an Olympic medal. The Olympics as of right now are still going off. So October, we will start training again and we'll just kind of tick off the boxes of what we need to hit to get there. And that involves training camps and indoor races, outdoor races, traveling again. I, those, these are all things we don't know if they can happen, but they're certainly on the paper to happen mm -hmm. for us. Okay, awesome, great. Well, good luck with all of that in the future. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so I want to transition now and talk a little bit about your relationship with Infinite. Um, so maybe just tell us kind of when it started and how exactly we fuel you. Okay, so I started with Infinite probably, I think in 2014. I was introduced to Darcy and to Infinite. And we started out with a, um, the, uh, I'm going to forget what the name of it is now. What's the pre-blend? Oh, my own blend, my sprint blend. Your custom blend? Yeah, yeah. My custom blend. So I started with my custom blend and the recovery product. Um, and I ended up loving it. And as things evolved and as I got to know the product more and I got to know Darcy more, um, I still, we have tweaked my custom blend a little bit more to what I need out of, out of for my everyday training and my, um, my recovery and my raw are my main products right now. And they have been for the past, well, really since 2015, those are my staple products. And now that cold brew has entered the scene, that is absolutely something that I depend on. Um, I love coffee. I'm a coffee lover. And especially in the summer when it's so hot here in Windsor, it's really great way to get in some protein and cold brew, I think is, I think it's my favorite product that Infinite has come out with for sure. Mm -hmm. Great. You're not the first one that said that. <laughs> it's still good. I love that. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about, um, we mentioned a little bit, but you went to the university. So just tell us a bit about kind of that experience. What was it like being a varsity athlete at the University of Windsor? My experience as a varsity athlete was amazing. I think I had the best of both worlds and, you know, being a varsity athlete, there is, there is a skill set required to be able to manage the student life, but also your athlete life. And I thrive on time management. And that was essentially what the university set me up for was to be a student and an athlete at the very same time and to be able to blend those two so well together. We had amazing professors, amazing, amazing programs who were so um, into our varsity athletics, like everyone was invested in it, it felt like. And then on the flip side, the athletic program was run by such an amazing man, Dennis Farrell, who was my coach. Um, it was really an experience that I wish everyone could have. And I know it's not like that for everybody, but I, I would hope that their experiences could be very similar to mine. 
Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. And it seems like too, I guess, the time management that you learned probably at the university, it seems like right now during COVID, you talked about time management and all those things. So it's kind of lessons that you can use at so many points in your life, right? Yeah, yeah. It really carries on through the rest of your life. <laughs> For sure. Um, okay, so just kind of one more thing here I want to touch on. Um, basically, any kind of advice you have for maybe athletes who are current athletes or up and coming? Um, first, just with regards to nutrition. So anything that maybe you've learned along the way that might help uh, somebody else? Sure. So I think my biggest piece of advice is, um, you know, in terms of nutrition, it's really important to eat healthy and to recover well. And a, a lot of the times what has been preached to me and what has worked for me is that you always go to food first so that you can get the wholesome nutrients and benefits out of food first. And then you turn to supplements and supplements for me have come in um, at very particular times in my season. I don't always use supplements except for cold brew. I will, I will drink on a regular basis, but my custom blend and my raw and my um, my recovery product, I only really use when I'm in the really thick of things because I want my body to be able to recover at its own rate. And the benefit of the product of Infinite is that I can get food, I can get you know all those recovery stuff into me immediately after a workout without losing out on the recovery side of things. And that's what's so important when you go into to peak athletics, athletics or any kind of sport is that you need your body to be hundred percent all the time. And that's where these products come in is I can't go and run a hard workout in 30 degree weather and expect to down this many carbs, this many protein and feel okay. I feel nauseous after I'm, I'm, I'm training. So infinite in the liquid form, that's the easiest form for me to get that stuff in. But first and foremost, if you can eat, eat, and try and even I try and eat within that two hour window after um, after a workout. I still have my product, my infinite product, but I will try and eat a real meal within two hours so that I can recover properly. Okay, great. Yeah, no, that's a great tip. Um, and then uh, <laughs> so crazy, but I'll let you do that. No, you're good. Just with regards to uh, training, so you can talk about the physical side of things, or if you want to yeah. touch on the kind of psychological. Aspect, sure. Um, whatever you think. Sure. So I think um, in terms of training and, and psychological too, you have to know that the results aren't going to come right away. And for new and upcoming athletes or athletes going into university or just starting out on their career, the results won't happen right away. It's taking me years and years to get to where I am today. I'm 32 and I started this when I was 12. So don't expect the results to happen right away. You will see good results. Don't get me wrong. You will see good results, but your end goal may not happen right away. And that's okay. There will be injuries and that's just injuries are really a way of telling your body that you're, there's something like wrong. You need a break or there's like a biomechanical issue that needs to be addressed. So really taking the time to read your body, listen to your body. If you're sore, if you're like, running sore, like um, not running sore, but like muscle sore because I worked out too hard is totally normal. And oftentimes it's best to keep going on, but it's important to know that, okay, this is not muscle sore. This may be a muscle strain or a muscle pull. It's, you really have to learn to read your body. And I've learned to do that after all these years. I, like, I, I know exactly when something's wrong or was, <laughs> I'm just working too hard and that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, I think on the mental side of things is you have to be kind to yourself and I'm preaching this and I need to preach it to myself sometimes too, is that things don't always go as planned. Like for example, this year with the Olympics being postponed, these are things out of our control. And really all you can focus on is what you're in control of. What can you do every day to make your safe, yourself better? And that's really been my mantra through all of this is that I'm doing everything I can in a day. I can't look two months ahead or three months ahead because I don't know how that's going to look. And quite frankly, I can't control how that looks. So it's really about focusing on you and what you can do to make yourself better. Right. No, that makes sense. I think it's tough for a lot of people. You want to, you wish you could control what's ahead, but really like you literally can't. You can't. So you just have no, to, and it's obviously easier said than done, but um, uh, I'm glad you're working on it and hopefully other people are too. <laughs> I hope so too. 